We're up to Daf Lamed Chet, Amad Aleph. We're already at the next Mishnah. There's always more to say, but y'all is trying to push, pull. How much do you want to dive deep and how much do you want to make a little bit of headway? We spent a good few weeks on that section of Gemara. And uh, I think we'll just pull up stakes and learn a new piece. Uh, we're going to learn in two parts tonight. Uh, there is a Mishnah and a Gemara. But that's not the two parts. Uh, we're going to basically leapfrog. We're going to do the first sugya. But we're really going to see it in a very superficial way because I want to get us tonight to look at the second piece within the Gemara, which is all about Hallel. Uh, and we may need to take out Sidurim to figure out what's going on, for people who don't know. I mean, most of us know it by heart, but I'm saying, like, you'll see, we're going to be talking about this Minig and that Minig. And hopefully, if all goes well tonight, which is a hope and an aspiration inside of the next uh, 45 minutes or so, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to have a better sense of what we're doing in Hallel, why there's so much variation within Hallel about the manner in which the Hallel is recited, even every single time. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. So, uh, and again, we're leapfrogging, I'm saying again, we're leapfrogging the first sugya. We're gonna come back to it because the first sugya is bound up with the concepts of levels of Chiyuv and the concept of Shomei Ke'one, when you hear something that someone else is speaking or reading ah thank you it's as if you're responding to it we need to sit or can do the thing on hollow so we're going to come back to that so you want to i want to see it more in depth but the way the gemara happens to be organized here is mishnah gemara and um and then and then it goes into a piece about hollow so we'll, we'll do that so i'm urging you please out of your out of respect for the for the shears flow don't don't stop me up in the first part with Davka not getting in depth. I just want to see the surface. That's how we go. Get a lay of the land. Then subsequent weeks, we'll come back. We'll dive, dive deeper. The Mishnah begins on account of the uh, discussion uh, 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 previously about uh, arriving at mitzvahs and accomplishing a mitzvah, say coming late to the table and without your, your Dalad Minim, now you're showing up. So you have to perform the mitzvah. So other contingency situations, basically, I think that's the reason why. It's the next Mishnah. It's giving us what seems on the face to be scattershot because what does this have to do with what we learned a moment ago or Mishnah before about uh, taking the lulav in a certain time frame? The point is there's a time limit uh, in which you have to fulfill the, uh, the mitzvah of Natilat lulav. And here we're talking about other time-dependent mitzvahs from which other than me, Jewish men, everybody else is exempt from a time-dependent mitzvah, mitzvah shes man gramas. It's different levels of chiyuv. So now, mishahaya evet o isha o katan makrin oto ona acharehen mashehin omrin. If a person had either a, a, a servant or a, a woman or someone who is not of the age of mitzvot, who is reading for them, is prompting them for the recitation of Hallel. So they would respond with every word that is spoken. They would have to respond in kind with those exact words as well. It's a way of saying that there's no constant of Yatsa Motzi here because these three do not have the same level of Chiyuv as the, as the man. Again, we'll come back to it more in depth, just getting the lay of the land now. So you have to respond. And by the by, the Mishnah throws in such a, such a man should be cursed that uh, he has to resort to the reliance on someone who does not even have his level of chiyuv. Um, back in the day, not like today, where you could just say, let's look, at, look in a sitter and everybody just has a book. There was a time before time, not so long ago in the broad scheme of world history. There were no printing presses. Everything was written by hand. Certainly in a time of the Mishnah and the Gemara, it was much more challenging to have written documents and accurate written documents. So people learned things by heart. Maybe there was a sitter for the shul. Now is it. I mean, everybody's got to use one sitter. That's the Shleot Zebra's function is to teach people the davening is an ongoing educational process. Yes, there were scribes. Yes, they copied various things, but the average person didn't necessarily have these items. And uh, a lot of people didn't necessarily know even know how to read. 
it's hard for us to realize that, but they memorize the sort of the cadences of the Kaddish, uh, you know, whatever the, 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 the tefillah was. You know, uh, ab- yeah, all by ear. But before a certain point, there was no tefillah of Kaddish, obviously. But, you know, whatever it is, the, whatever the matbeah shetibu chachamim, the matbeah shetibu chachamim in the, in the, of the Anshik Nesdak Dola, the Amida, Kiddush, all of that. It was taught generation to generation. It wasn't a given that people knew it. And that's also the Kriyat Torah, the reading, the public reading of the Torah. It's not it's Limud Torah, but it's also... That's the that's that's how that's how people did it in a public setting. So imhaya gado makre oto ona acharav halaluka. If, however, the person who's reading for this Jewish man is also a Jewish man, someone over the age of bar mitzvah, then all they'd have to respond each time is halaluka, like a refrain. Like they're going to say a line, you say halaluka. They're going to say a refrain, a line, you say halaluka. Markum shinagu lichpol yichpol. Yifshot, yifshot. In a place where the minig is to double certain lines of halal, to repeat them, you repeat. In a place where the minig is to read it straight, you read it straight. Right? Levarech, yivarech. In a place where there's a bracha on halal, there's a particular syntax of the bracha on halal, beginning and ending. So then you do it. Hakol keminig habedina. Everything will follow the minig of the place where you are. Now, this is a shocking, staggering Mishnah, you know, to think. What, what, there was a minig in some places they didn't say brach on halal? Yes, the minig in some places they didn't say brach on halal. Ever? Strange. Asher Kisom Sotz Vandal Likrota Halal sounds like it's something enacted by the Chachamim. It's pretty obvious. Um, and, and it seems like here there's a lot of uh, minig. The reading, what gets repeated, what gets said aloud, what's responsive, what does everybody say? Let's look at Rashi right here on the... Um, Actually, you know what? Wait, before we do that, skip that. Wait, hold on. Let's do the Gemara first. I'm sorry. Tanur Rabbanan. So they said we're going to do Sugya 1, Sugya 2. Sugya 1, we're leapfrogging. But here's at least to see the surface. Gemara. Tanur Rabbanan. Be'emet Amru. Ben Mavarech Avi. Sorry, this Tanur Rabbanan is actually a quote from the Gemara in Brachot. The Sugya there is Birkat Amazon. And the idea is that one's, uh, one's child, uh, who is not yet of age, could lead, the, help the, the, the adult lead uh, the Birkat Amazon for the adult. So be'emet amru usually means halach l'moshe misinai. That's uh, that's uh, uh, what some say. Here Rashi doesn't use that expression. Just says it's considered a halacha that no one argues on. Whatever it is. Be'emet amru ben mavarech la'aviv ve'eved mavarech la'rabo ve'ishem mavarech la'bayla. In all of these circumstances, if there's a a, a man in a, a family in a household, he doesn't know how to bench berkat mazon. So the child can do it for the father, the eved for the master, and the the wife for her husband. But a curse, say the Chachamim, should fall upon a man whose uh, wife and his children are the ones making the brachas for him, i.e. he's so uneducated that he doesn't have a clue what, what to do. Again, we'll come back to this sugya more in depth, but I'm, we're here tonight to focus on Hallel and to get some of the lay of the land of that. So Amar Rava, Rava, next page, Hilchata Gabirata, Ika Lamashma Min Haga de Halila. There are, are, are many halachot, great halachot, that we learn about halel uh, from the minhagim of halel that, uh, that take place. So now what follows is different minhagim, some of which when we hear them say, oh, that's what we do. Others will say, we don't do that. And that's, this was known to the Rishonim already, that it's not, uh, it didn't flow right across the board that everybody does the same thing. Again, it's sort of playing out what the Mishnah said, everything follows the minhag of the Medina. So this was from Rava, right? So whatever it is, uh, third century of the Common Era, and uh, Bavel. But uh, so he writes the following, he explains the following. So um, second line, Hu Omer Halaluka, that means the Shliach Tzibur says Halaluka, Vehein Omrim Halaluka. They respond Halaluka. Okay. Mikan Shemitzvah Lanot Halaluka. From here we learn that it's a mitzvah to respond Halaluka. We didn't, we're not going to open the sitter in a bit. The seed inside, the sirash, etc. So, who omer hallelujah de Hashem? The chazan starts hallelujah de Hashem. Vehein omrim hallelujah. That's all they say. Mikan. From here we learn sheim hayagado makre oto one achrav hallelujah. That if there is a gado, meaning the chazan is uh, someone over the age of bar mitzvah, and that person is going to start uh, with the uh, with hallel and say it out loud, all you have to say is hallelujah and your yotze. Don't say the words. Who Omer Hodul Hashem? Vehein Omrin 
Hodul Hashem. Uh, we'll see soon. It's uh, the first line. Hodul Hashem Kitov Gilam Chazdo. And the people respond, Hodul Hashem Kitov Gilam Chazdo. Mikan Shem Mitzvah Lanat Roshi Prakim. From here we learn that it's a mitzvah to respond with the beginning of chapters. So it's a bit cryptic. What, beginning of what chapter? Hodul Hashem Kitov, it turns out, is another chapter of Hala. Hala is comprised of various chapters from Tehillim. So, yeah, it's the beginning of a chapter of Tehillim. What we call Hala is as a, a couple of chapters of Tehillim. What we're going we're gonna to see is three chapters of Tehillim. Separate chapters of Tehillim. Yeah, all from Tehillim. Yeah, yeah. But, but the point is they're from different chapters. So from here, somehow we learn from responding, the Hodul Hashem, replying it again, that's um, it's a mitzvah lana Roshe Prakim. So it marnami Amar of Hanan Bar Rava. Uh, we also learned uh, Rav Hanan Bar Rava says mitzvah lana Roshe Prakim. It's a mitzvah to recite again. Same thing Roshe Prakim. Uh, so another another limud along these lines. Hu Omer Hodu Ana Hashem Hoshiana Vehein Omrim Ana Hashem Hoshiana. So we do Mikan Shim Hayakatan Ot Makre Oto Onin Achrav Masahu Omer, and from here we learn somehow that if it was a katan, someone who's a minor who's leading the halal, so uh, then you'd have to respond exactly as that person said, the katan said. The gedolim who are there have to respond in kind with the exact same words. So how who, lead, how ah, well, that's the question. What's the katan doing leading? We just yeah. finished. Yeah, yeah. Benny, did you want to say something? Can I just finish the line? Uh, no, continue, continue. Yeah, let me just finish. Hold on. Who uh, Omer uh, Ana Shematzlichana? If it's time to, to double, then you double. A minute ago, Anasham Shiana was doubled, is telling you some halach about the cotton. Now, Anasham is telling you something about doubling. Strange. Now we're in the same sentence. And they respond, B'Shem Hashem. Mikan L'Shomea Ka'one. From here we learn Shemei Ka'ona means even though you didn't say the words Baruch Haba, mm -hmm. it's like you said it, your Yotze, because the Chazan says it. You just say B'Shem Hashem. We don't seem to do it that way. Benny, you wanted to ask? You're muted. Just unmute if you want to say something. You're muted. Benny, unmute, because I don't hear you. Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm just uh, following along. Ah, okay. I, th I thought you were, I thought you were, I wanted to ask something. Okay, so that, that's, that's the basics of the Gemara, the next sugya. And the Gemara starts delving more and more into the issue of Shemaya Ka'one. Again, that's going to be connected back to the issue of the Mishnah of a Katan who's leading. I'm skipping the, 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 the material on either side because that's going to require more analysis. But for tonight, maybe you call it a little bit lighter or something, but we'll walk out tonight, hopefully, looking in the sitter saying, oh, that, oh, that's why we do what we do. And it doesn't totally add up to what we see in the Gemara. Dafka not. Dafka the mission said, you follow the minig. So they're Minhagan that grew up over time. Yeah, please, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 for Shiana? Yeah, it was strange. It said Anashim Shiana. Can, can you repeat the question? The question was, uh, Larry says, if I understood the question correctly, what's the difference between a cotton and a gada? Why are you bringing up about a cotton with the Anashim Shiana, right? Yeah, they're the same. It's, it's it's strange. The pshat is it's strange. I, I I grant you, it's very it's very strange. If you look just by looking at the page, you see those long rashi's, long toast within. There's a reason. They're trying to unpack what is this about and how does it jive with what we have or don't have today in our recitation of Hala. Okay, so in order to understand this, to unpack a little more, if you um, if you look at um, let, let's let's start on Lamed Chet Amid Aleph with Rashi. The Rashi is one, two, three, three lines down, and the wide lines of Rashi on Lamed Chet Amid Aleph. The Dibur Hamadchil is One Acharav Halaluka. He responds afterward Halaluka. Right. So we had said still in the Mishnah that if it's a gadol, so you have a Shliach Tzibur who's a gadol, which is our assumption of how things work in Shul today. There's right over bar mitzvah, there are shliach tzibur for halal, right? So they're going to start, and at least as far as the mission is concerned, whatever they say, you answer halaluka. That's what it, that's what the mission actually says. Then it says, well, you follow the minic. So Rashi explains what this means. Al kol davar omer on everything that gets spoken. 
the refrain is going to be the same word. Hallelujah, 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 every time. That's what's in Masechet Sota. Kate said, Amri saw Shira Bayam, Kigodol Hamikare et Hahalel, Vehem Onin Acharav Halleluka. So, how did this Jewish people, it's sort of, it's a little bit um, circular. How did the Jewish people recite this Shira at Yamsuf? Like the Gadol who was reading Hallel for the Tzibor, leading the Tzibor. They, and they respond, Hallelujah. Then explains, Moshe Omer, Ashira Lashem, Vehem Omrim, Ashira Lashem. Moshe Omer, Kigao Gaa, Vehem Omrim, Ashira Lashem. Alma, the Al Kol Davar, the Davar Kaamar, the Onin Hallelujah. So in the Gemara and Sota, there are different approaches. It's not monolithic, not everyone agrees with this, but one of the Deot, Masachat Sota, is how did Shirat Ayam function? It was not the case that everybody sang together in a chorus, Az Yashir Moshe Avnei Israel. No. Moshe Rabbeinu started, Az Yashir Moshe Avnei Israel, Ashir Azol Hashem, Vyom Alimor, Ashir Al Hashem. Everyone said, Ashir Al Hashem. He said, Kiga O Ga'ah. They said, Ashir Al Hashem. He said, Susurach Warim Avayam. They said, Ashir Al Hashem. And so it went the entire way down. All they needed to know was two words. And that's the Shira Lashem. <laughs> that's one day. But the way the Gemara in Sota explains it, it says, you know how the Jewish people sang Shira at the Yam? Just like we do Hallel, where the Gadol says a line, and we keep saying Hallelujah after every line, pretty much. And based on this Rashi, it sounds almost like it's not like the end of a paragraph. It's like at every comma, every time there's a pause, right? Because we learned from the Gemara in Sota, just a just pshat, what, what he's saying. When Moses said Kiga Oga, they say again, Ashira Lashem. So that, that's their line. How come they didn't say anything when it says Azishim Mashev and Esau, Ashira Azot, Lamor? Because that's Lamor, this is what they said, colon. What was the song? A song to Hashem, a song to Hashem, a song to Hashem, which was the earliest version of Hallelujah. Praised be Hashem, was Ashira Lashem. Yeah? Not accidentally, at the Hallel, the end of, um, at the end of uh, the Seder not the end, I mean, it takes quite a while, but the halal is called by Chazal, the Birkat Hashir. Is it referring to the whole halal that we're saying to the end? Is it the bracha at the end, end? But that's what it's called. It's related to the idea, it's the shira. We don't do this, why don't we do the shira, uh, the whole shira at the, uh, at the say, come back, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll discuss. Yeah, we do, at the end of halal? No, we, we say the, the, we don't say Baruch Hashem. Okay. Oh, we don't say Baruch at the beginning. Yeah, but we say Yahalucha, you know, it's at, the, at the end. The different day is, by the way, what you say at the end. So it's Pesach, so yeah. What do you say at the end of Hallel at your Seder? You say the same syntax as the end of Hallel, like in the Seder, including the words Baruch Hashem, or do you stop, Ata Kel, period, and then you go into the next section, which ends with Yishtabach, Melech Kel Cheol Amim, and that's the end. So there's a, there's a discrepancy. I don't want to go too up to a topic, but the point here is Rashi is just, just showing you what does it mean on the Ahra of Hallelujah? It means every time there's a phrase, the people say Hallelujah. We don't do that today. We don't do that today. But Lichpol says the Mishnah, it's a double. Kol pasuk, pasuk. V'nagu came parsha The reason why there was a Minag to double Psukim is because there is a Parsha that the entire Parsha is doubled. Hodu. Tchila vasof, yomarna shlosha pamim, karati ka anani ba merchav ka, Hashem li Hashem li, tov lachasot tov lachasot, svavuni sabuni, dacho tichitani, vayihili lishua korin avishua. You mean Hashem? You mean Hashem? Lo amut vlamut lo vlamavet. Excuse me, lo natanani. Putchili share share zehashar vegomer aval. Me odeka ulamata odecha, excuse me, from odecha ulamata eno kaful should be kaful according to the Gilina Shas over here or whatever this is. This note, it's not the Bach, I don't know who it is. Vahaina da Amrina the Kaman, mostly flichful me odcha ulamata. So, what are we talking about? Now you need the sitter. If you don't have a sitter, you can go grab a sitter. Maybe you know it off by heart, but go go grab a sitter for a minute. It'll be helpful. We look in the sitter. We're on page 632. No how is complete before you announce it. So actually, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll flip something. I'm just kidding. You start. We, we'll forget the brachas beginning and end now. We're just talking about the rest of the Hal itself. So page 632, the first chapter of Halel is chapter 113. Halel is 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118. That's Halel. 
That's the whole thing. So 113, there's a hallelujah at the beginning, a hallelujah at the end, fine. So he, the, the original statement is that we're going to say hallelujah after every comma. The Chaz is going to say hallelujah, hallelujah of the Hashem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah at Shem Hashem. Hallelujah. Yishem Hashem of Orach. Hallelujah. Me'at of Odom. Hallelujah. Take a long time. But that, yeah, it'll take a long time. Take a long time. Yeah? yeah. It's got a note that my internet connection is unstable. That's not the only thing that's unstable, but it's okay. Let's keep going. So you go through the whole thing. The first section, the first section, by the by, is um, it, it goes, is 113, 114, Kuf Yudalit, Kuf Tet Vav. We divide in half and we call it Chatsi Hal, half Halal. We're lopping off the top of two chapters, 115 and 116. Why? Not for now. We'll have to come back to it. But th- th- this whole thing would be the Halaluka section. Halaluka, Halaluka. And as you keep going, Kuf Tet Zayin, 116, page 636, is a Hafti, right? And Ma'ashiv, right? So that's, we say Chatsi Halal means we're taking off part of chapter Kuf Tet Vav and Kuf Tet Zayin, 115 and 116, the top, it's like lopped off. And we start just the second half. But a, a full Halal, we're just saying the whole chapter. Okay, now, when you come to page 638, 117, that's still using the Lashon of Hallelujah. Page 638, we have uh, Hallelujah. We have uh, 638, chapter 117, Kuf Yud Zayin. Hallelujah to Shem Kol Goyim, Shabaku Kol Haumim. Hallelujah. It's a big theme. It's a big Indian. Now, the end of Hallel is the rest of Hallel is one big chapter. Chapter 118. Here, the word hallelujah disappears. And now the word again and again is hodu. So what Rashi just said, I'm just showing it to you, is there's a lot of repetition. You have hodu, you have a chiastic structure. Chiastic structure means like A, B, C, D, E, D, C, B, A. It's a structure of a lot of things in Tanakh, and especially true in, in, in Tehillim. So the beginning of chapter 118 is hodu and if you turn to page 640, the last pasuk is Hod Lashem Ki Tov Ki Lam Chazdo. So they match. There's a doubling. So that's doubled. And then everything inside it is also doubled. So what Rashi said is, go back to page 638. They have the three other lines of what we call Hod Lashem Ki Tov Chazdo. There are four lines that end Ki Lam Chazdo. That itself is a doubling and a doubling. But you have Yomar and Yomru and Yomru. Yomar Na and Yomru Na, Yomru Na. Mina Meitzar. It's Karati Ka. And Anib Merchav Ka. The next pasuk, Hashem li, and the pasuk after that, Hashem li. The next pasuk, Tov lachasot ba Hashem, and the following pasuk, Tov lachasot ba Hashem. The next pasuk, the word Svavuni. The pasuk after that, Sabuni, Gam Svavuni. The next pasuk, Sabuni. Yeah, you understand? Uh, and the two psukim, the, the three psukim all end with Ki Amilam. We have Ki Amilam, Ki Amilam, Bishem Hashem, Ki Amilam. Actually, three times. Bishem Hashem, Ki Amilam. Yeah, you see, three times in a row. So if I was doing this on a, on a on a computer, I'm on a computer. I should have thought of this ad with greater seichel. Just press enters. Oh, these. Oh, this goes together. This goes together. You see how it all lines up. The trouble is, an editor has to do with the. Maybe Coran does a better job. I don't know. But what can you do? You have to fit things on a page. So make it make it one big paragraph. But you lose something until you start thinking about. Oh, the the That those words themselves are. Are doubled, yeah. Then you have uh, you have uh, again um, uh, uh, it, it keeps going right. You have Vayhili Lishua Korina Vishua Yemin Hashem. The next pasuk Yemin Hashem. Then again Yemin Hashem Lo Amut. Then it comes to Vlamavet Lo Natanani. They're they're all related. Now you could ask all sorts of questions. You know, it's sometimes the beginning of the pasuk, the end of the pasuk. Sometimes it's the same refrain coming three times. Why did David Amal set it up that way? Lo Yodea. So it's like another study in of itself. But Pitru Li Shari Tzedek, right? Zashar La Hashem, Shar and Shar. That's doubled. Where does the doubling end? Odcha is not doubled. Evan Masu, not doubled. Me'ek, not doubled. Zayon, not doubled. So what do we do? Double. Doubling. Doubling, say it twice. Is that? To go with the same theme of the, of the Kfeilut. And the Ana Hashem, same thing. It only says, if you look in a Sefer Tehillim, Look in the back of the art school sit over here, he's only going to see it once, it's not twice. So, what do we do? We double Baruch Haba, Kel Hashem, Keli Atavodeka, Hodel Hashem, not doubled. Oh, double it. That, 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 that's what we're doing. We're, we're filling out the concept of the of the Kfeilut. It's not that way in the Sefer Tehillim, it's that way in the recitation. 
So that's that's what Rashi here is pointing out, and that's that's what it, that's different. So the first half of Hallel, every time the Chazan says a few words, we just say Hallelujah every time. The second half, it's something about this idea somehow of doubling something, and you see that the Hal is actually two two parts. First part is the Hallelujah part. The second part is the Hodel Hashem Kitov part. It's actually on a bracking on either side. Yeah. So uh, you, you with me? You follow? So it opens up like a new way to think about it. Uh, I'm throwing up. You already have right now, just now, this minute. Everyone on, in the shir, you already have your first beautiful Dvar Torah for Hanukkah. Chazal refer to it as Yemei Hallel Vehoda. So Hallel Vehoda in English means say Hallel and say thank you. So it's very nice. That's nice. But it's actually how Hallel is written. Hallel, Hallelujah. Hoda, Hoda Hashem Kitov. The tefillah together is called Hallel. Why? Because Hallel came first. They called spelled tefillah Hallel. But yes, and Hanukkah, as opposed to uh, Purim, which is Yemei Mishnah Vesimcha, Hallel is Yemei Hallel Vehoda. So thank, it's a praise and thanksgiving. But, and Purim is not recited, right? Kriyat is uh, Hilula. But when it comes to Hanukkah, Davka Adin of Hallel every single day, the full Hallel. That, and that's and that's why, I mean, it's not exactly why the halachic reasons why it's to do with the chilik and the korban. It has to do with the fact, whatever. Okay, I'm going to, down 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 a whole road here with with uh, with Hanukkah. But you understand? And then you have the two brachas, the bracha before and the bracha after, which we'll have to get through sometime. But uh, we, we didn't finish here. We, we we believe you me. We're just starting. But that's that's Rashi on the um, on the Mishnah. Now I'll turn the page to Lamed Chedam and Bet. Lamed Chedam and Bet. And look at Rashi there. Hilchata Gibarta. Hilchata Gibarta, Rashi says, Halachot Gidolot, many great, great halachas that we learned. Mimin Haga de Halila, I'm on 38b, looking at Rashi. We're going to get to Tosfut in a minute. Mimin Haga de Halila. Mimasha on Roim, Shenoagin Achshav, be a main of Batiknesiot. Well, the Min Haga de Halila, he's just explaining what, uh, what Rava said, right? We learned many great halachas from how the minute goes today in Shul. In Rava's day in Shul, mm-hmm. about how to do halal. Mimash and Roim Shinogin Achshav Biyamenu. But because Rashi doesn't mean his own day, he means Rava's day. Kidim of Farish Vazil, as it's going to go on and explain. Shehayu No Hagin La Anot Halaluka Shte Paamim Veloyoter. That in Rava's day, unlike the Mishnah, they're saying no. They only answered Halaluka twice and not more than that. What to understand what that means? Velo Velmrim Kol Halal Im Im Hamakre Ad Hodu. So actually, they would say the whole halal together with the makri, that the makre is the one who's causing them to read. In other words, they said it along. According to Rashi's rendering of Rava's explanation of what they do in his shul, right? And that's actually what you have. The first one is, uh, uh, he mentions, halaluka v'hein omrim halaluka, mikan shemitz v'lan halaluka, right? So, hu omer halalu at abdei Hashem v'hein omrim halaluka. Where did that come from? So... According to the way Rashi is explaining it, if you go to page 630 to the beginning of Hallel, you have the first chapter of Hallel starts with the word Hallelujah and ends with the word Hallelujah. So that, there, there you have to say Hallelujah because th- for that chapter. The rest of it, they would read along. This is not what the Mishnah says. This is Rava now. They'd read along, read along, read along. And the only other time they would s- to content themselves with the Hallelujah, I don't think it even includes uh, the end of chapter one. A fifteen. That's uh, the end. Me'atav ol haluka. I don't think it includes that. I think it only includes, and not six thirty-eight either. It's just the one that ends page six thirty-eight, the one that ends emet Hashem lo'olam haluka, the beginning of halal, the end of hal of, of the halal part of halal. Those chapters they have the word halal beginning, haluka at the beginning, haluka at the end. Just like the next chapter, all be in one big chapter. Hodol Hashem kitovim chazdo. Hodol Hashem kitovim chazdo. So it's haluka to haluka. So according to what Rashi understands in the Gemara, it's again, I'm on line three of Rashi. They only respond with the word halaluka twice and not more. They would say everything else with the makra, means the guy, the man, the chazan, until hodu. But the onin hodu acharav, the chosrin vikorin imo ad ana. So they would respond. Hodu Lashem Kitov after the Chazen, but then they would go back and read with him. So it's like we have today. The Chazen comes to that. Chazen says Hodu Lashem Kitov. What do we say after? 
Hold on, Shem Kitov. Whenever we say after that, we all say Yomer Na Yisrael Kilam Chazdo. Then the Chaz says Yomer Na Yisrael, and we say Hold on, Shem Kitov Chazdo, and we say the next line. For those four, that's what we're doing. Then we read straight until Anna. Then Ad Anna of Onin, Anna Anna Hoshiana, the Anna Hatzlichana Acharav. We respond, and Rashi throws in Kemosha Anu Osin. That's like we do. I mean, Rashi is saying now in the 11th century, in my day, it's what we're doing. The Ein Zuki Kriyata Rishonim. This is not like the earlier generations, i.e. what's written in the Mishnah. Shayu Onim Halaluka Al Kol Davar. They would respond on everything, Halaluka, over and over and over again. Kidam Rinam B'Matniti In Tahacha Uva Sota. As it says in our Mishnah, it says in Masachat Sota. The Amar Rava, Miminik Shalach Shav Anu Lameidim, Ma'u Ika Kriyat Halel. In other words, we learn from the story of Rava. Rava is saying that the minig in his day teaches us what the main aspect of Hal is, that when it was enacted uh, uh, initially, they realized everyone had an obligation to read it, but not everybody knew the words. So the system was, Chazan will say, we'll say one word. Okay, it's like our equivalent of Amen. We're following along. But nowadays, this is Rashi talking, that everybody knows how to do it. Right? And we're all saying it all together. Oh, sorry, excuse me. No, not, but, but sorry. Rava is saying in our day, in Rava's day, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, where people know how to say Hallel, nonetheless, we still have twice like a vestige of the remembrance of the Hallelujah, not after every few words, but once at the beginning of the Hallelujah section, and once at the end, a repetition of the word Hallelujah. And what do we do after that? We don't, by the way, uh, today, uh, we don't do that in Shul. We don't do that. But that was what they had left over in Rava's day. The Hodul Hashem Va'ana, that part we do have the responsive. We can learn what the original, the, or, uh, the earlier generations were metakin specifically uh, to, for the responses for the people who didn't know and the people who did know, i.e., how they could fit in, they could respond, and they were able to be uh, to be uh, to be part of it. The 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 Rashi goes on. Let me probably come for air for a minute. Are we good so far? Okay. This, I hope it's instructive. It's not. Uh, the exercising our mind that much, but oh, now we understand like where it coming, where it's coming from. We did that with the Nanuim. Now we're up to with the Haluka. Question from Larry. One second. The, the way the way the, the why does this teach us what to do when there are non bikian who are in the shul? So that's Rashi saying that's what Rava is telling us by inference. We can learn about what's going on in the Mishnah. In the Mishnah, the Mishnah presupposes that there is a need for someone to lead and everyone to respond basically one word, which is halaluka, halaluka, halaluka. And Rav is saying, we don't do it this way in our day. You know, at the end of the Mishnah, said, it's going to follow the minig of wherever you are. So Rav is saying, uh, it's not our minig anymore. Rashi says, well, we learned by inference. The point was people didn't know. And you, you look at that Mishnah on page 38a, what's the Mishnah starting with? Someone who doesn't know how to read. I'm not arguing. I don't oh. same question I asked before. Because this, what you just read applies to the whole Kahal. Yes. Yes. So, why don't you just say it should be a cotton? I'm not talking about a cotton. I told you we leapfrogged the whole cotton discussion. That's what I, that, that's what I said right before you came in. We skip, we're skipping tonight the whole. Katan versus a gadol, the shemek ke'ona, and the, that this all this whole discussion presupposes a gadol who's leading it for everyone else. The whole, the whole yeah, the whole thing, the whole minute. Yeah, there's no discussion of katan here. Look, if you look back in the Mishnah, you'll see the first clause of the Mishnah was what? That was all pre. That that, that was okay. clause. That was all sugya one. Sugya one from the Mishnah. Again, I repeat, was the eved, the isha, or the katan. Then they'll read it. You have to say every word after them. And, 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 and that's not a good situation. That's clause one. Clause two, which we're focused on tonight is, Im makre oto. then what do you do? So Rashi just pointing out, 
Why did the Mishnah start telling us about that, which is not even our minute today? The answer is Rav is saying, well, we're more educated. Our people, the Hamon Am, are more educated. They are not really in need of doing it the way the Mishnah describes. But if you had a community where nobody knew up from down about how to, how to read Hebrew, and no one had a book in their hand, and then have transliteration or whatever, what would you tell them to do? Just say hallelujah. Every time I say a few words, you say hallelujah. And it's like you're saying it. It's like how you're signing on. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Something like that. No, look, you know. Uh, so, but the point is, so Ra, the, Rashi's saying, though, that Rav pointed out, though, that in his community, even though they're more educated, they kept one vestige. Instead of having every line, hallelujah, hallelujah, at least the first paragraph and that last paragraph to show sort of like bookends on the hallelujah section of the hallel. Then they get to Hodu, and we still have it that way. It's responsive. Some part we say all together. Some part, yeah, they say, the Chazan says, and we have a refrain. Hodu Hashem Ki Tov Ki Lom we say four times. Some of it, we're just re- repeating what the Chazan says and responding. Yeah. What we don't have left is the half-half. We don't have that. Oh, wait, no. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. No. Oh, no, I was just going to say, but when the Chazan gets to the Hodu, we only do the Nanui. For, for, he's doing it for the Yomar, you know, Hashem. You're back to Nanuim. We've left, left we left that Nanuim behind. No, I know, I'm done, but, but I'm just, I'm just coming back to that. Yeah. By saying that, because when we say Hodu, you know, we're, we're, we keep repeating Hodu, Hodu, Hodu. And we do the Nanuim every time. We do Nanuim every time. Yeah. Every time. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, but the Nanuim, yeah, okay. But that, my point, now we're just talking about the recitation of Hollow. Forget, forget even Sukkot. Okay. Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Okay. Don't, don't bring the, the Nanuim is like another track. That was, that was 37B. We're talking about the Nanuim when you say, when you not, when you wave, when you not wave. We're in the ha, we're in the Hallel section over here now about the rest station. Right, right. Imagine it's Hanukkah. It's not, um, you know, we're going to see soon. It's going to be an Afghan between Pesach and other times, but we, we probably won't get there tonight. Mark, you want to ask? We'll get there. The Seder, not the Seder. Okay, yeah. So, as always, I'm confused a little bit. So, the Rashi in the Mishnah in Scene one, as you call it. Yeah, one. clause one, scene one. Yeah. Scene one. We had this concept that if you're if you need a katan or a re, or an evid to or an isha, someone is not obligated the same degree that you know, are. Somehow you were deficient. Yeah. You should, you should have learned. But yet, when I got all these, yeah, that same standard doesn't seem to apply. That's and part Rashi, of C- and Rashi doesn't doesn't even where he's very, very critical in the midst. On Yeah, this is also your one, which I skipped I know, tonight. I know, I know, I on know, purpose. I know, I know, but I can't just not combine them. Yeah, okay. So when I they are together. Rashi on Sugya 2, yep. now I can be just as unlearned. And, and it's not a problem. As a gut old to leave, and he's telling me this is the minute I got to do it. So yeah. explain that. So so okay. so th- 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 this, this is actually... Uh, you're, you're, draw, you're drawing me in. You're drawing me in. No, it's okay. This, this, this is going to be. This is going to be. No, no, it's fine. This is going to be part of the toast vote. The beginning of the wide lines uh, of toast vote, which is the Ramadan about the Hilo Me'era. It's going to be there. Um, Mark's question for those on the line, correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. Is um, uh, the reality that uh, that when the Mishnah talks about someone who's unlearned and says, you know, if you have someone who's not as equally obligated as you are. Uh, leading the the hollow for you, that's really a terrible thing. And then right after that says, but if you're not learned, you know, here's what you could do for the hollow, and someone else will just lead it for you. And then if the person's a gadol, well, that, that's fine. Why is one case that's egregious? Fine. It's the minute of, it's the the minute of the place, place. right? Where they don't, we have, so how, how do those two things live together? So that's already fusing sugya one and sugya two. Your question's excellent. That's that's the in, and that's going to be the discussion. And Tosfo, Tibur Amatil, about the Hilo Me'era, is going to be asking why it is that. Rashi has a very big problem with the uh, Hallel being led by uh, um, Eved Isha Katan that doesn't have an issue with the Sugya in Brachot Avchaf Amid Bet, where, okay. where it actually also is Tavol of Me'era, but Rashi doesn't seem to relate to it. Why is one thing okay. raising hackles and the other one not? All right. So we'll, we, we'll, we'll certainly get, no, no, so it's great. That, that we're certainly going to gonna gonna get there. Just, I mean, the Rashi on Lamed Chet Amid Bet, like yeah. I mean, and all that, like I said, that implies that's the way they did it. They did it. Yeah, Rava's day. Right, yeah. Rava's day. Yeah, for sure. Right. But not how we do it today. I understand. Yeah. But there's no criticism of Rava's day and how they did it. Yeah. Indicating something other than it would be the 
proper way to do it. That's true. Uh, yeah, but because the Mishnah said, follow the minig of the place, we're going to see there's a lot of variation. We're about to learn Tosfot, well, where you're going to see Tosfot's going to say, uh, we don't do it like this. So that's my second question that I didn't ask, and I'm sorry, oh. you can push me off here next week, is how can something be designated as a mitzvah when it's a, when it's a minnow? So in the, right, in the right, 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 right. They're banning about the word mitzvah. Says, yeah, because of this, we see that this is a mitzvah. Well, if you're telling me it's a mitzvah, then it's not a minnow anymore. So I didn't yeah. understand that. I was waiting for Rashi to jump on it. Rashi, Rashi didn't, didn't, didn't jump on it uh, uh, as such. And it turns out here, it sounds like we didn't even do all the Rashi's yet. Rashi sounds almost like he's saying it's a mitzvah, but he means really it's a minig, but he's using the term mitzvah. Like people say like, oh, it's a real mitzvah what you did just now. Okay. You had a mitzvah. So it's just, it's really a mitzvah. Like the word unless, word unless, unless, unless the minig becomes the manner of fulfilling the mitzvah for eating halal. Like says, fast on the it's like not really a mitzvah. Right, so, that's really a mitzvah. Yeah. That's a mitzvah deraita, so, yeah. But but uh, yeah, but point point well taken. Like, why is it banning about the word mitzvah? Mitzvah to do with this, a mitzvah to do that way. What does it mean by that? It doesn't mean it's a separate mitzvah. Right. It's a mitzvah of halal. What is that mitzvah? Even altogether, we have to come come to it also at the seat inside. Uh, Sully, I'm sorry, wait a patient. I'm sorry. So, so we are assuming that the problem was not related to the fact that there weren't enough sedurim. Because there weren't enough sedurim, and people didn't know. Two problems. They couldn't read. They couldn't read it. Some people just couldn't read. Because they didn't have enough access to so this, this farm. They couldn't read. Yeah. Yeah. Not because there's a lack. Of there, but there was a lack of farm. There was a lack of farm. So they couldn't all have a sitter. So therefore, they, they didn't learn it. it because yeah. there's no sitter for them. Maybe yeah. some. Well, yeah. yeah. You came so to school and, and you learned the lyrics because you heard people singing it. Well, I think I yeah. think I think historically, yeah. the absence of books for him kept people from learning, learning. being able to learn. Yeah. So, read or whatever. Yeah. Actually, was I think this. Historically, that's kind of yeah. Now they understand what was being said. This, yes, we, because they spoke. Yes, understand. when they spoke the language, but when they no longer spoke the language, mm -hmm. what was mm -hmm. going on? We know for sure mm -hmm. there was a maturgaman. They read. They laned. Had laning pasuk by pasuk. There wasn't a drasha from the rabbi. It was a, maybe a shir another time. It was the laner laying the pasuk. The maturgaman said it in Aramaic. They laned the pasuk. You're, in Aramaic. you're, you're allowing me to quote from my college classics. Oh. So the, oh. the Greek and Roman epic tradition, the Iliads were all orally done because people couldn't read because there weren't enough books mm -hmm. to learn to read. There were long so songs that could that had, had a tune to it. And again, now by the by, and here's you know you're seeing it right right here. You know I don't get too too much into into history, but but it happens to be germane to this topic. Exactly what you're saying. In the days of the Mishnah. Taka, it's still a big problem. That people just don't know. They don't have books. And what by the time you get to the days of Rava and Bavel, they're Bikian already. I, what happened? We see that whether it was the uh, you know, the pressures of, of Gullus, uh, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe they're no longer in an agrarian society because they lived out in Bavel. And they, still, I'm sure there were a lot of farmers, but they had other trades as well. Uh, they started to standardize education more and more people learned. By the time you get the Rabbi Shub and Gamlas, it's still a Tana. The idea that you know, because you're based Robin, they got to teach people how to learn, how to read, etc. Didn't mean everyone got it. I was just talking with my kids this morning in the carpool about this because they were carping about how to have to go to school. And I said, you know, there was a time not so long ago where people didn't go to school. Children had to go to work. You know, I said to my daughter, you have to go to work. There's no such, there's no such Indian. You have to draw the water. You have to this, that. They said, oh, you know, I probably have to do a lot of you know, cooking and home things and stuff like that. I said, well, that's what people had to do. That they keep things going. That's the reality. So I was trying to explain like that notion that people go to school is itself not a given. But I said when 2,000 years ago, or whatever it is, 1800 years ago, people, we were already talking about it. It's what? Not easy to get into that car well, it's a carpool. The carpool is just my daughter's, so it's not really a carpool. But... It's, it's out of a time in the car. No, my, 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 my point is, we take it for granted that every child, obviously this is an education and should not be forced, pressed into service and to labor as a child, you know, child laborers. First of all, that place in the world today, and again, also eye-opening for my children, like that place in the world today where kids do not go to school. Their mom is still working in a, in a, a slaves in some way. Uh, it's, it's terrible. That's the reality of the world. So Klali Yisrael, we figured it out like way before a lot of other people, but in an agrarian society with apprenticeships and the like, it's not clear in the days of, uh, of, the, of the Tanakh, that everybody was literate. That's not clear in any society, yeah. you know, but, but we do see, you know, and here you see it right in front of you. In the days of the Mishnah, here's what you're going to do. And in the days of the Gemara, the Arisarab is saying, well, we're already beginning. And as we keep going, yeah, 
They look at uh, keep going in Rashi where there were no printing presses. You know, it's even more. Uh, and we're going to see Tosfot in a minute. So let's let's go a little further. We have, we're basically at the time, but let's see a little more. Let's we'll see. We'll stick with Rashi a little more over here. Um, um, let's see. Um, uh, Rashi, uh, yeah. Who am I? Haluka. You know, Haluka be kancha mitzvah lan Haluka. Yeah. Okay. Mima she anu noagin she ha makre poter ba Haluka va anu shotkin va onin acharav Haluka shotkin li shtok shtok silence yeah shtika. So the minag is that the makre today we would just call it the the, the shliach tzibur. Begins with the word hallelujah. We stay quiet while the hallelujah in a big voice, and we respond hallelujah. The who shall take, and then he's quiet. We learn that there is a minute Dav going to say hallelujah as a responsive one one word with the shliach tzibur. And then everyone says it together. Then, who omer hallelujah of the Hashem? They omrim hallelujah mikan, lemisha godol, makre, and here the Bach adds in makre oto, shona acharav hallelujah. Me mashino again achshav la not old hallelujah, pam shnia. There is a second time that we say hallelujah. Ushar hallel, korin kulanimo, and on the maiden takana rishona, misha eno baki, o baki, ve eno gomro, ela somech ala makre. Dialogue Hallelujah, I'll call the Varva Devar, uh, 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 and everyone says, Hallelujah. Now, where is that? If you just, just look very nice, page 638, you see there's a little instruction from, from Rabbi, Rabbi Art Scroll, Rabbi Arthur Scroll, congregation, comma, then chazen. It's not exact, but there's, there's something going on over here. It's not just happenstance. There was something here. The congregation was meant to say the whole thing. Everyone would say, rattle off. Hallelujah. And the chaz is meant to repeat it. And everybody says together, hallelujah. What happens in our shuls? We don't do it that way. What do we do instead? We, either what's meant to happen is everybody's meant to say the two sentences, the, the one, well, whatever it is, the two sentences, yeah, to hallelujah. And the chaz is meant to repeat it. But what happens usually? Everybody's singing together. So we just say the whole thing together. So everybody says hallelujah together. And as you see how the minig shifts over time. There's like a, something going on. We saw this in other ways in our in our shuls. I think we were Mafsar at Yoshin a little bit. Uh, Shira Kavod is an example. It's supposed to be responsive. But at certain times, there was a minig. If there would be a particular tune, everybody would say every line. It's not really correct. But it grew like that. That became, you know, it became the minig. You know what I mean? Uh, other things that started as a regular song. Yigdal suddenly became responsive back and forth, even though this, right? So it's machloikis back and forth on that one, you know, etc. cetera. But um, uh, uh, here's a good example right here. So they're saying, even though people are Bikian, they kept one vestige of the of ye old olden days where there was this one sentence, one capital, Kuf Yud Zayin, Chazim would say, I would say, Ame, uh, um, instead of Ame, excuse me, the answer, Hallelujah, would remind everybody that if we were in a community without Bikian, Everybody would say hallelujah after every few words, and that would suffice. The, the, the piyutim on Yomim no Rai, um, when I was growing up, they were always responsive everywhere. And in, in my lifetime, it seems to have changed that everybody's singing them all together. Right, right. So another perfect example. It's another great example. P -U, yeah, uh, Art, Art just pointed out, there were times in his own lifetime, he says, where many of the Piyut Shani Yom Kippur, Yom Nurem, were responsive. And now so many of them, everybody just says it all at the same time. It's a tune and everybody sings it together, what have you. So yeah. I'm not poskining that it's always the wrong thing to do, but there was a reason why, and there were times when the response was actually like baked in. And in Hallel, as an example, you're seeing it, where the, the responsive right. thing is not like, well, that's what they did in Europe or something. 
it's already from the Mishnah and the Gemara. And that you know, we don't have time right tonight. I must go. I'm sorry, because I have the boys my Mitzvah can come to my house in a few minutes. But we're going to see Tosfot on, on this. There are one, two, three, four Tosfot team. We're going to see five Tosfot team. Sorry. And then we're going to go back and see the other sugya that I know Mark is very excited about, and everyone else is excited about too. That has to do with the Kata, the Katan, uh, the Evet, Isha Katan, and the Shemir Ka'ona issues. We'll have to come back next week for that. That's all I have time for. Next week, seven o'clock, maybe back in the main building, maybe here. We'll live in, in the not knowing with the suspense. Let's see what happens. But not in the tent, that's for sure. Okay. <laughs>